The following is a lecture given by His Holiness Jaya Bhattaka Swami on May 8, 1985 at New Panihadi Dam in Atlanta, Georgia. The class begins with a reading from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Maja Leela, Chapter 1, Text 209-218. to Madhya Leela, Chapter 1, Text 209, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Doinya patri lekhi more pata le baro bar. Se patri dhara jane tuma babohar. Translation You have written several letters showing your humility. I can understand your behavior from those letters, said Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Tuma hidoyami jane patri dare. Tomasi gaite sloka patailo tumare. By your letters I could understand your heart. Therefore, in order to teach you, I sent you one verse which reads as follows. Porobaya seninari bhyagya pigriha karmasu tat eva swadhyatyanta Navasangarasayanam Translation If a woman is attached to a man other than her husband, she will appear very busy in carrying out her household affairs. But within her heart she is always relishing feelings of association with her paramour. Gora nekotasite nahi mor prayujan Toma duho I really had no business in coming to Bengal, but I have come just to see you two brothers. Everyone is asking why I have come to this village of Ram Keli. No one knows my intentions. Balo hoilo dui bai aila more stane ghori jaho boya kichu na kori ho mone. It is very good that you two brothers have come to see me. Now you can go home. Do not fear anything. Jan me jan me tu me dui king korama ochirate Krishna tu mai kori be uthar. Birth after birth you have been my eternal servants. I am sure that Krishna will deliver you very soon. The Lord then placed his two hands on the heads of both of them and in return they immediately placed the lotus feet of the Lord on their heads. Doha alingya prabhu bolilo bhakta gane sabe kripa kori udharo ho dui jane. After this, the Lord embraced both of them, Rupa and Sanatana, and requested all of the devotees present to be merciful upon them and deliver them. Dui jane prabhu kripa deki bhakta gane hori hori bole sabe anandi te mone. When all of the devotees saw the mercy of the Lord upon the two brothers, they were very gladdened and they began to chant the holy name of the Lord, Hari Hari. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Srila Narottam Das Thakur says, Chariya Vaishnava Sheva Nistar Payapaya Chekeba. Unless one serves a Vaishnava, he cannot be delivered. The spiritual master initiates a disciple to deliver him. And if the disciple executes the order of the spiritual master and does not offend other Vaishnavas, 
His path is clear. It's very important here. The spiritual master initiates a disciple to deliver him, and if the disciple executes the order of the spiritual master and does not offend other Vaishnavas, his path is clear. When one takes initiation, if they simply stick rigidly to following the instructions of the spiritual master, and if they religiously avoid offending other devotees, then their success is assured. If they have a bona fide spiritual master, of course. Consequently, Prabhupada continues, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu requested all the Vaishnavas present to show mercy toward the two brothers, Rupa and Sanatana, who had just been initiated by the Lord. Actually, Prabhupada would also, just like when someone takes sannyas, all of the sannyasis give a blessing to the new candidate for sannyas. They bless the cloth, then a person takes sannyas. Similarly, Srila Prabhupada, sometimes when someone was going out on a preaching mission, he would tell all of the devotees that you bless. The devotees would say, who are we to bless? Your blessing is enough. He said, no, Vaishnavas can bless and give Krishna conscious good fortune. So you should give your blessings. You're all Vaishnavas. So here we see uh, when they already got the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, then one might think it's redundant. What is the need for getting more mercy? But Lord Chaitanya gave this example how the devotees should be respected and how the devotees' blessings are very powerful. They can cause Krishna to give his mercy out of turn. If you want to wait in line until your turn comes, you can do that. But if you want to get special mercy early, then you get somehow or another the blessings of the spiritual master and the Vaishnavas and you can get very quick mercy. Of course, if someone gives up the service of the Vaishnavas, then he never gets the mercy of the Lord. You see, until such time as he gets the mercy of a Vaishnava in the future. Charya, charya Vaishnava Seva Nistar Peyache Keba who has got the mercy? Who got delivered by giving up the mercy of the Vaishnavas, by not serving the Vaishnavas? Prabhupada continues, When a Vaishnava sees that another Vaishnava is a recipient of the Lord's mercy, he becomes very happy. Vaishnavas are not envious. If a Vaishnava by the mercy of the Lord is empowered, by him to distribute the Lord's holy name all over the world, other Vaishnavas become very joyful. That is, if they are truly Vaishnavas. One who is envious of the success of a Vaishnava is certainly not a Vaishnava himself, but an ordinary mundane man. Envy and jealousy are manifested by mundane people, not by Vaishnavas. Why should a Vaishnava be envious of another Vaishnava who is successful in spreading the holy name of the Lord? An actual Vaishnava is very pleased to accept another Vaishnava who is bestowing the Lord's mercy. A mundane person in the dress of a Vaishnava should not be respected but rejected. This is enjoined in the Shastras, Upeksha. The word Upeksha means neglect. One should neglect an envious person. A preacher's duty is to love the Supreme Personality of Godhead, make friendships with Vaishnavas, show mercy to the innocent, and reject or neglect those who are envious or jealous. There are many jealous people in the dress of Vaishnavas, 
in this Krishna consciousness movement and they should be completely neglected. There is no need to serve a jealous person who is in the dress of a Vaishnava. When Narottama Das Thakur says, Charya Vaishnava Seva Nistar Peyache Keba He is indicating an actual Vaishnava, not an envious or jealous person in the dress of a Vaishnava. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports. I was looking for that verse for a long time. So, unusual purport, but it's very topical in the world today because you see here Lord Chaitanya gave his special here some new people just came We're dressed as Mohammedans but they had a relationship with Lord Chaitanya that no one else knew about and Lord Chaitanya gave his special mercy to them more than what other devotees were getting apparently some very special mercy but none of the devotees present were inspired by any jealousy or enviousness that oh why is they, why are they getting the mercy why not me why are they being successful they must have cheated they must have this that some you know some backbiting or some kind of jealousy nothing like that rather oh look at how fortunate they are look at how merciful Lord Chaitanya is they've got the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Haribo Haribo they're chanting they're bliss they're in complete ecstasy to see Krishna's mercy acting no one is thinking that oh how come I didn't get embraced by Lord Chaitanya I'm gonna get those guys who do they think they are jumping over I came here before they did. I have a monopoly on Lord Chaitanya. They're not really thinking all these things. But sometimes you find that in the history of, uh, in the recent history of uh, the Krishna conscious uh, broader movement, you know, those who practice Krishna consciousness within and without of Iskand that or, or claim that they're practicing that if there's some kind of success by the pure uh, devotees which is simply a manifestation of Lord Chaitanya's mercy on them there's always someone to criticize or be jealous or give some other type of false interpretation so this is definitely not the symptom of a real devotee of a real Vaishnava even in tennis matches cricket games other type of sports at the end of the match, the two contestants who are competing is almost like a, a battle. They're supposed to, you're boxing, some of they're supposed to shake each other's hands, congratulating whoever won. We're not competing with each other in Vaishnavism. Because there's no shortage. It's not that this one wins, the other one has to lose. In the long run, everyone can win. There's no shortage of space that you're vying for some kind of space, like who's going to get the the uh, musical chair or something. Krishna is limited; he can only accommodate so many. No, he has got unlimited scope to engage conditioned souls, pure, bring them back to their original position, and engage them in pure devotional service. So, somebody gets that mercy. Well. It's a matter of rejoicing. It's not a matter for being jealous or envious or antagonistic in any way. If someone shows that nature, 
This is why they're not being delivered. Because they got a materialistic vision. Material life, grihamedi life. Even a sannyasi or a renounced person may have a type of a grihamedi jealous attitude. If someone else gets the mercy of the Lord, they become intolerable. How there must be some something wrong with that person. How can he have the mercy of the Lord? How can he be successful in preaching? We have to find out what's wrong. Rather it should be a source of inspiration. Well, if someone even as fallen as that person could get the mercy, then there's hope for me. So I, I tell people, if you think that I got any kind of mercy, that I'm so fallen, then you should feel very hopeful because you're all much greater than I am. The devotee, of course, he's always eager for mercy. So the, the appetite is insatiable to get more and more mercy. So the devotee is never feeling that uh, they've achieved any kind of... Uh, well, they're always hungry for more mercy. But of course the devotee is grateful for whatever Krishna has done. That's a fact. Certainly Rupa and Sanat were overwhelmed that Lord Chaitanya had initiated them, that he had blessed them. And they were prepared and they were certainly dedicated to carry out his order for their entire lives. So Vaishnava is very grateful to the Guru and to the other Vaishnavas. So although the other Vaishnavas, they might consider that, well, who are we to give blessings? But as a matter of duty, that if I have any kind of blessing to give, then I hope that you may advance very quickly in Krishna consciousness. You see? If by chance I have anything, then may that be bestowed upon you. My good wishes that you may advance in Krishna consciousness. Before a wedding, for instance, if you follow the ancient Vedic tradition, the day before, two days before, there are many ceremonies, and some of those are that the... Uh, the bride or the bridegroom, they're supposed to go to temple, take bath, and then also they get the blessings of brahmanas. Senior family members come. Even sometimes they bathe them in, uh, in some kind of uh, special waters with uh, sands and holy waters and uh, turmeric and different things in it. There's so many systems which are there. So if a brahmana who's not even a Vaishnava can give a blessing. What to speak of a Vaishnava who is dearest to the Lord? Krishna says that of all those, the one who is preaching to my devotees, he's the most dearest of all to me. The most dearest soul. So certainly a Vaishnava has a capacity to Appeal to Krishna to give his mercy to someone. Why Krishna will refuse? Generally speaking, the brahmanas, they'll give blessings for material things. The Vaishnavas are generally not so much enlivened to curse anyone like that. But you can continue in your material life. They're not too enthusiastic for those type of blessings because they know that it's not the real perfection of life. Rather, they like to bless a person to end the cycle of birth and death, to develop pure love for Krishna, to thus enjoy the highest perfection. So therefore, the Vaishnava's blessings are even more valuable. Of course, a Vaishnava can also bless someone that their devotional service may be successful and do that with a full conviction. Even though the devotional service may be some apparently material endeavor for which the fruit is intended to be offered to the Lord. We should be very careful in case someone has achieved any kind of apparent mercy of the Lord and doing some devotional service. If someone is critical or envious of that without cause, 
you see, without just cause or without constructive effect, then one should guard against hearing such things because that can only be a detriment to one's own devotional creeper. Even to hear the offenses of the Vaishnavas is detrimental to one's spiritual life. By hearing, one becomes implicated. And one loses the devotional enthusiasm. And thus the devotional creeper starts to wither. We were discussing a few days ago about Raghunath Das Goswami. How he would bow down every day a thousand times to the deity. And he would bow down to 2,000 Vaishnavas every day. He would seek out where is the devotee and bow down. Even though he was such a great Acharya. And another quality of Raghunath Das, wherever there was Krishna Kota, just like a bee to honey, he'd go to listen. But if someone started to discuss anything true or false about some misfortune or, or, or something critical or if envious against some devotee, even in some cases if it was true, or for he, I mean, he didn't, he, if he just heard anything derogatory about any Vaishnava, he just immediately left that place. He didn't want to hear any more. It was his very strict principle. So, of course, he was able to achieve the complete mercy of Srimati Radharani and Radha Kunda. With the special mercy of Lord Chaitanya to serve Radha Kunda and Govardhan. So, Srinivasacharya went to him and begged for blessings. Give me blessings that I can preach in Bengal. Raghunath Das Goswami blessed him, yes. Now you'll be empowered by the Lord to preach. So Srinivasacharya, his success is unparalleled. He went with nothing, just into a place and he practically unparalleled before Prabhupada. He went into a place and he actually initiated the king and made the entire kingdom Krishna conscious. And actually many beyond the kingdom he got the king to organize for a broad preaching, publishing of books, so many things. So he was the main organizer and the first Rathyatra festival. Of course, it was the brainchild, oh, excuse me, the first uh, Gora Purnima festival. It was the original desire of Narottam Das Thakur, but he called in Srinivasacharya to organize it. He asked Srinivasacharya that uh, I have this desire to call in all of the Vaishnavas and to celebrate Lord Chaitanya's appearance day on Gaur Purnima. Could you please help me to do this? I'm in anxiety. I, I don't know exactly how to I might pull it off. How to... Srinivas merely wanted to comfort his God brother, his friend, spiritual God brother, God cousin brother. He said, yes, there's no anxiety. Certainly we'll be able to do it. Don't worry. Tomorrow we'll send out messengers. This way Naratam was comfort went off and then Shinivas is sitting down and he was thinking, my goodness, how are we going to do it? <laughs> he said, all of the associates of Lord Chaitanya those that are still left on the planet, they're totally out of commission. Because Lord Chaitanya has left the planet, they're so much, and they all were so close with him, 
that they 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 have nobody uh, can hardly breathe. They can, they can't. They're just totally crying always and chanting and total separation. They don't go anywhere. They don't want to see anyone. They're just like in a state of shock. How, how are we going to get them to come hundreds of kilometers from every different place and come here? He was, uh, he started thinking about it, that was actually a momentous task. That um, there's a lot to ask. Lord Chaitanya appeared to him in his dream personally and said that do not fear. This is my desire. I want this festival. So all the devotees may have a yearly reunion. You send out your messengers. Do not fear. My devotees will come. And then he gave some inner technique how to do it. He said, you invite Janava Devi, you invite all these people. He disappeared. So, the same night Lord Chaitanya appeared to Janava Devi. She is being a widow. She wouldn't go anywhere, Nityananda's wife. Lord Chaitanya told her that I want you, you're going to be invited by Srinivas. When, when she got invited, he came, said, I want you to go to this program and you bring all the other Vaishnavas with you. Because Janava Devi came, she brought, she just went right up, was like, he just took everyone, Shantipur, Navadweep, the whole lot. Of course, many came already, but she did the finals. You know, like at the end of the Rathyatra festival, you got to see if everybody came. Didn't leave anybody. She she came and if there was anyone who wasn't going, after seeing her, they definitely came. So, and certainly Srinivas Acharya, he felt that any success he got was due to having the mercy of the Vaishnavas. So we should always hanker for the mercy of the Vaishnavas. Whenever we want to do something, we should ask for the mercy of the Vaishnavas. And if we find someone who, when someone is successful, they have this other emotion, we should avoid them, neglect them. What is this? Are there any questions? <coughs> Yes. And he should neglect them. Yeah, he should neglect them. He should know that this is a symptom of non Vaishnavism. It's a symptom of materialistic consciousness. It's the root offense for which we have to come in the material world. This is calm, low, mud, moha, mud, sarjo. See, calm, crowd, low, mud, moha, and mud, sarjo. Uh, lust, anger, greed, uh, illusion, madness, and uh, finally, envy. These are the six vices. So, the first five, they can all be engaged in Krishna consciousness. You can engage lust by desiring some beautiful, nice object to give to Krishna. Like someone sees a flower, I want that. Said, I want that for Krishna. You can engage anger. When you hear Krishna or some Vaishnava being offended, you become angry to defend them, to protect deity or something like that. Anger can be dovetailed, calm, crow, low. Greed. To be greedy, to get more and more for Krishna service. That can be dovetailed. Even uh, one becomes uh, so ecstatic and chanting that they become practically like intoxicated. So that also gets dovetailed. Mad moha. But uh, in devotional service, sometimes devotees became illusioned, uh, 
in their ecstasies. But uh, enviousness, that is like the original cause for our fall down. That there's no, apart from the Lord Himself, for the conditioned soul, there's no easy way to engage that envy. Specifically, there's no way to engage being envious of another Vaishnava. So this enviousness of other Vaishnavas, of the Lord, this has to be eradicated if you want to achieve pure love for Godhead. So when you see that, that should be a cause of great sadness. One should be very ashamed that such a thought entered the mind and one should drive it out. So that's why Bhakti Siddhanta Sarai Thakur said that we should beat the mind with a broom hundred times in the morning or is it a shoe hundred times in the morning and with a broom hundred times in the evening. Just like if some marauding animal enters into the house or something, the wife may pick up a broom and chase it out, get out. Just like that, we have to drive out these thoughts from the mind and remember how real Vaishnavas think and act. Any other question? Tala Vandas? Maharaj, it's different how it's lust and greed and anger and madness and illusion. Are, are these some are these subtle uh, elements that attack the mind as a form of ghost, or is it just that because of our uh, lack of Krishna consciousness and his causes? I mean, do they have personalities? I mean, like in subtle form of the kind of mind and form of thoughts and how they are. Actually, how are they attacking? Well, it's not everything ultimately originates from person. But uh, <clears throat> these things, once we accept material consciousness, they're resident. And we have to clean house. We have to drive the things out. We have to purify them. Just as our spiritual body becomes dormant and we, it almost like transforms or it gets, we get a material body, so similarly, our mental attitudes in the spiritual world, those things which were glorious, they become polluted when they mix with the three modes. So then again, if we can keep them on the stage of sudha sattva, pure goodness, then they are no longer a cause of our fall down. We, can, we should consider that those things are resident within us and they have to be dovetail. We're not going to stop anger. Sometime or another we'll be angry. So then we should limit that to being angry for the right cause. Sometime we're going to be lusty or greedy, so we should reject those type of lusty feelings which are going to degrade our consciousness and only accept those type of, you know, and rather change the mind to being lusty for auspicious things for the service of the Lord to be very uh, greedy to get the mercy of the Vaishnavas not to be envious against the Vaishnavas oh someone is fortunate let me this is very good all glories to him may he have his mercy I, since I'm more fallen I need now the mercy more look how the Rupa and Sanan presented themselves made their case that we are the most fallen we need your mercy most. And then not just once, but giving practically like a lawyer for this reason, where them are for that reason. In this way, this is the real fact. We are without a doubt. And if someone says, no, you're not, no, but we are the most fallen. Therefore, <laughs> you please have your mercy upon us. In fact, there's no better recipient than us if you consider who's the most fallen. And they presented all the reasons. <laughs> In this way, their mind, of course, was totally uh, became eradicated with any kind of false ego. As soon as we get something, a little good happens, someone says something, that sticks in our mind. And we immediately become inflated. We are so prone to the slightest influence like that. 
So then just to keep the mind totally purified, the Rupa and Sanatana Goswamis, they had perfected the science of remaining totally humble and dedicated to the Lord. So actually they were very glorified. But that was the way they had trained their minds. So we should follow in their footsteps and also train our mind. Because a controlled mind is the best friend. An uncontrolled mind is our worst enemy. So as soon as our mind starts to think that it doesn't have to listen to our intelligence, then we're in trouble. Then it becomes uncontrolled. And when we keep the mind that no... You always have to listen to the intelligence. What is intelligence? The words of the Guru and the Vaishnavas. That is our Krishna conscious intelligence. So we have to arm the intelligence with their instructions and then guide the mind. So just to keep the mind in place, we remind that how, apart from their mercy, how utterly hopelessly lost in this material world we are. Hare Krishna. I don't want to hold up this Sankirtan movement because tonight everyone has to come back early, right? Haribo.